Damn it. Uh, okay, so stream has started. Hey, anyone who happens to be watching. Uh, Hi. As you can tell, four of us are moving, and one of us is an image. Can you guess which one it is? It was me, me the whole time. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> oh, damn it. It's a riddle. <laughs> but no, Justin's having some internet issues, and uh, instead of delaying even more, we just decided to pop in to uh, record a little bit. Uh, he's still going to try to keep it working, so hopefully we will still be doing an episode tonight. Um, I think theater of the mind, if anything. But in the meantime, if anyone's here and wants to say what's up, what's up? What's up? What's happening? So, what's up? What oh, dude. So, yeah. Work is stressful, right, guys. Yeah. Like, a lot of people are bad at stuff. Yeah. Amen. Preach, girl. Let's say I'm in performance review season, so trust me, man. I feel that. Yeah. I'm also in performance review season. I already got my review in May. How'd you do? 14 years. Top talent. Hell yeah. Or exceed. I, I think they changed it now, so it's like it used to be like top talent, and now it's like exceeds expectations. Good. I've gotten that for the past 13 years, I think. I'm That's that you. corporate lingo. <laughs> yeah. You're not the top because we can't have people better than other people. No, pitcher, catcher. I just want to play. Oh, we're talking about that kind of top. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, sometimes I think that sideways means something too. Different. Nice cuddle position, you know. Sometimes, like you're very tired. Big spoon, little spoon. I just want ice cream. Little spoon is an underrated position. Really. Jet jetpacking jet is wonderful. What's that? It's where the bigger person is the little spoon. Because they're riding you like a jetpack. Because they're riding you like a jetpack. It's also oh known as Banjo and Kazooie. <laughs> I like that, too. <laughs> I'm adding that to my vocabulary. Jetpacking? Yo, jet what's up, boys? Banjo, banjo and Kazooie? And Kazooie? Either one. Both. Because I'm always Big Spoon. It can also Dude. be when the larger person's on top, because sometimes the bird runs and the bear's on the back. This metaphor is getting too deep. I'm sorry. <laughs> i'm just I'm imagining sorry. like a yoda backpack now like oh it can be yoda no, too yoda's carrying Yoda. luke he's like yeah i got this <clears throat> i need to i need to pull up never mind i won't pull it up seems pull like a lot of work What's up? pull yeah. up or pull out post up yes <laughs> i still have it stuck in my head like a damn sociopath. What? Dude, we're going to get copyright struck. Stop. Oh, my God. Do you Easy. think I'm good at singing? That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you so much. Did you guys see Courtney Love trying to get attention off of Olivia Rodrigo? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's a bit of a reach, but... Uh, do we want to... I like. I kind of like this idea to roll uh, a d20, and lowest per number has to ask a question to the group to start some conversation. Oh, think of a question. The lowest number has to. Yeah, low because you're the loser. You're the lowest number. Oh. I rolled a ten. No one wants to say. I rolled 14. a two. Twelve. How big is your penis? <laughs> Are we talking length or width? Uh, yes. Give me uh, mass, actually. Volume. Volume, Grand. yes. Hold Volume. on, let me go fill up the bathtub. I'll be right back. <laughs> Water displacement. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I'm trying to remember what the South Park measurements were when the kids thought that that's what they were putting up on, like, the school was measuring the kids' penises and putting them up on the board. It's like, no, that's how much you've grown each year, not the size of your penis. And it's like, oh, <laughs> that makes more sense. <clears throat> but, um, no, um, you should have given us more planning for this, Pat. <laughs> uh, um, improv. You know, the brain. thing we do every Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, that's why I asked him how big his penis was. Um, I was getting ready to tell you. Yeah, you stopped. I asked the follow-up question. <laughs> Commit or don't. Follow-up question is you know the answer. Um, 
We shared a wall for a year. Oh that my actually god, it's so tiny. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's round, but... Um, <laughs> Is it, though? It's weird. It's like it, a plate. <laughs> he calls it the octagon. I don't understand. All girth, no length. And, like, pointy. <laughs> Is this a pencil? Just... <laughs> it's a pencil. It's a, it's I'll never tell. It's a little knife. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I have I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, cool. So you rolled yeah, the two now. I'll, I'll lead it off. I'll lead it off because Mike's bad at this. Yeah, um, I wasn't prepared. I'm not <laughs> either. Improv. Uh, Josh, when you were coming up to the reveal of Loki, what kind of thoughts were coming through the brain space. Uh, what was it like transitioning from Dremel to Loki as well? A couple things. Cause I remember the day that we were doing the reveal, I was like really stressed out life wise. So I was really nervous to do it because I didn't want to not do it well, which is why I said I was a lanky five, two. Um, so the, I was excited though because it's this thing we like Justin and I had had kept hidden for, you know, a year at that point. Um, so really, what what was going through my head is don't fuck this up, don't fuck this up, don't fuck this up. Um, the transition though, I've I've noticed, and I'm actually trying to adjust it a little bit by. This is my justification for watching Loki, <laughs> is that I'm trying to like get back into that character, because I feel like what I did is I had Dremel, and he became his own person. And then right. I didn't have Loki ready in my brain anymore. So Loki just became like me, but like more, a little more like this kind of feel. <laughs> Got it. So, um, yeah, I think the transition's still happening. And I, th I also think largely because the entire time that Loki has been Loki, shit has been going down. So it's been like, I have no, I have no time to be like have personality i just have to like get shit done you know are you excited for that possibility of like character development and kind of diving deeper into what makes loki loki oh yeah yeah especially as we go into um assuming we don't die if we get into the, the bottle stuff <laughs> it's a, that's a good it's a good asterisk <laughs> yeah so but getting into that bottle stuff is going to be super interesting um seeing the thor loki dynamic because i think after all this shit kind of settles the old brotherly rivalry kind of things will come back a little bit more because right now it's like uh we're gonna die so like the things you did that's fine yeah but at some point it's gonna be a little a little more crazy and i think loki will get back to his uh a little more mischievous self um, you make a good point considering right now we've been playing for <clears throat> i want to say like the last 10 weeks have been like a culmination of about three days so <laughs> Yeah, I mean the reveal was getting to the island, and then right, it's been nonstop battle and mm -hmm. mayhem and chaos ever since. Yeah, like Loki, Loki thrives when he is in control or feels in control, and he is neither of those things now. So it, it's very <coughs> much like a it's a humbling. So I don't know how that's going to affect his character going forward. But so it's a thing. one. One last thing I want to tack on, not to pull too much into this, because I know that it's uh, half of the fun for us is playing, or most of the fun for us is playing, but what kind of reaction is is Loki going to have when, when, like you said, the dust is kind of settled a little bit, but they do get to spend considerable time back on Asgard? Hmm. I don't know. I have a couple ideas of how it could go and i only don't want to say it because i want it to happen on its own fair i kind of figured something like that would come up yeah but let, hold on let me think real quick because i know i have at least i have like three loose ideas right now where they could go and i think they're the best one is a lateral move for him as far as like growing as a person Got it. Okay. So that's where it's at right do we, now. Do we want to roll again and, and hope that someone else can ask a question? Sure. Let's well, roll. Now that we're asking campaign related questions. I think that's it's always going to be campaign related. We're on the Ooh. deep just stream. I actually thought you it was going to be any two. kind of question. I rolled okay. a two. I rolled a four. 
18. I rolled an advantage because I'm flanking Josh, and I rolled a five. <laughs> so. I goes. Oh, I go again? You rolled a two. Yeah, I, I took your question. Yeah, but you just changed the rules. To make okay, it easier so Pat, for you. question for you. Why the fuck did you change the rules? <laughs> <laughs> That's not campaign related. <laughs> No, I actually do got a, a a question for you, uh, Pat. What is uh, what is your hope for uh, when we get to the moon? <sighs> That's uh, that is, that feels like a loaded question. Moon I hope a lot of things. Um, uh, my first thing, and something that's really stayed with Thor this whole time, is that uh, we're able to get Alder's staff fixed because the oh, bitch. the the drive for him wanting to get Mjolnir back was so strong because it was a gift on his wedding day from Odin to Thor. So it reminds him not only of Odin, his father, but also of Sif, his wife. And like, there's a connection element. And I feel like he resonates with that, um, with Alder not having the greatest family dynamic and not knowing it, all out and in, in, in its full fleshed out glory, but he knows that there's friction and wants him to at least be attached to the people that he can be attached to. So I think that's first. Uh, second, he's really, really, really hoping for something that's going to help us stop the apocalypse of the world. Um, I want Stormbreaker. The apocalypse is happening. Uh, I want Stormbreaker, but um, we'll see if that is something that's possible, tangible, if Justin lets me do that. Um, but, yeah, more than anything, that's I, I think that's number one. And, like, it's very important to him that – because he had told – he said it to Alder. Thor had said to him, like, if we go there, I think he can fix your staff. Yeah. So I'm hoping that that's a real – like, a real thing, but – who the fuck knows? Now, question for you, Pat. Totally not. Well, yeah, anyways. Uh, do we know, like, the outcome of Sif? Like, do we know if she's alive or if she passed away? Or, like, have you told us any of that? So, or no. If not, it's all good. No, no, okay. That was it. You don't have to go okay. into it. You guys would know that, like, he has expressed in campaign that they are because to be honest, Thor doesn't really know. Mm -hmm. Um, Ares slash Enya just told him that he was the one to kill our son who was Modi. Um, so that was found out. Okay. So you guys would know that Thor's son is dead. Um, and then Sif is also believed to be dead and he believes personally and that's something again that we he would have conveyed to you guys through the travels and stuff but um it was further solidified when uh, loki and i went to asgard and they had a statue built for her where the queens of asgard were and that would signify that she is dead <laughs> so Some form of confirmation right right, right okay right. i was just Wondering because I never, I know, like thinking about it over the past weeks, I was like, I don't know if we've ever gotten this confirmed. So, I mean, to be fair, you and I still don't know that the apocalypse is happening yet. So, that is correct. you're not wrong. We roll again. Yeah, let's roll again. I rolled a ten again. Eleven. Uh, Seventeen. Sixteen. Yeah. My question. A... Okay, then go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. I have, I have a non D and D question that. Oh. Is just in my head right now. Yeah, do it. How do you guys feel about the heat waves that are happening? And do you worry that Florida is going to be consumed by the ocean? I'm not fully kidding. I'm like partially kidding, but there was like five percent of me that when I'm I left, I'm like, I should be away from the water. <laughs> because I'm paranoid. But I, I know it's it's weird, but I want to know where you guys are at because you live in Florida. And like Justin's picture right now is perfect for that question I asked. Because it's like, <laughs> what the fuck are you asking, Josh? Why does your brain do that? Water is not a sphere. Yeah. It does taste spherical though. It does. Um, Thank you. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. um being the fact that we grew up just north of Pinellas County, I know Pinellas County is pretty much a category five for being completely submerged. 
So I think that's a very real fear to have. Um, I don't know how close we realistically are, especially with us. We're inland enough that we realistically wouldn't be affected by that for a while. But, dude, these heat waves are fucking nuts right now. Mm-hmm. Do y'all like, think that, like, Florida will be, like, the new Atlantis in, like, 500 years when archaeologists are, like, they find looking Disney. back at all this shit? No. It's like, oh, yeah, that one place makes too much money. That's what the California The government for. will not let the... The government will not allow Disney to go underwater. It won't. I'm gonna That's go assuming the government stays. Here. I'm They're gonna, gonna pull go a Sokovia. <laughs> just gonna full make conspiracy it theorist. Walt Disney already has stuff built underneath the park, so that way he can raise the elevation of it. If all of Florida submerges, it's just gonna be Disney Island. The only way in is by private jet, and he's gonna make even more fucking money that way. Uh, everyone knows. It, it sounds like, like Pinocchio. It is like twelve. Uh, what is it like 12 stories above sea level already mm-hmm. is it really so if if the rest of the if the rest of the state goes under disney will still be above sea level a lot of their like uh employees moved uh, especially in um i think it's a magic kingdom um uh, we traveled well i used to travel through the tunnels underneath the park because uh the ground floor of disney quote unquote is like three stories above the actual ground floor of just in general. Yeah. So uh, everything, yeah, you can travel underground under Disney anywhere on property in Magic Kingdom. Um, and that's how I used to get from one place to the other when I, where I used to work there. And and it's big. Like, so like you have like golf carts over Pargos. Uh, you have like Pargos and everything that goes like that can take you because it's so large that walking through, it's still going to be a good 20, 30 minute walk trying to get from one place to another. Yeah. Are Pargos the like actual it's name golf for cart. golf carts? Oh, that's what they call it at Disney. They call them Pargos, but it's a golf cart. But obviously because it's underground and there's not heavy ventilation, like you can't use a gas powered golf cart. Everything has right. to be electric. Hmm. But I hated there's being also, down there. There's yeah. also an underground portion to City Walk that I used to mm-hmm. be around in all the time. Yeah. Because I worked down there too. Yep, I hated it. Eh, I got used to it. But... I have a yeah. basement well, that's underground. I, I have a, basement. a. You can't have one here. I know you can't have one here. You can't. I still want one. Because we're, we're sinking as a state. Uh, I have a campaign <laughs> question for Carlos. What's uh, what's Stock's relationship like with uh, his deity right now? Honestly, especially since I leveled up in Barbarian, I got to pick my path as a zealot. Like, it's actually pretty strong now compared to, like, how it was at one point in the campaign. Um, Like, I think he's realized that he had to go through the darker things in life to actually understand more about compassion for others and to actually feel like he needs to do something to save people if that makes sense um you know he had to go through the darker times in order to see the brightness of the light um so i would say it's pretty pretty strong now even though he can only see with one eye but that's not Pelor's fault it's yeah. not no so yeah that's where i'm at word to big bird well, do you envision taking on the mantle of being his, uh, I forget the word that we use. The avatar. Avatar. I've gone back and forth with it. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was like, depending on, because obviously he's jumped around through two deities. Two mm-hmm. deities, yeah. Um, like, he at one point didn't feel worthy. I think he's leaning more towards the side that he is feeling worthy to become Pelor's avatar, but he would still question it. Like, am I worthy enough to be your avatar kind of thing? So he would probably question Pelor quite a bit before he actually accepted it. But I feel like me as Carlos as a player feels like Fox direction potentially, like that could be a potential route um, where he's headed. So 
Who knows? That might be end game kind of stuff if he survives. Who knows? All of us could die tonight. Because I like I at one point I even considered trying to find a way to get Thok back to his original realm. Because again, he's not originally from this plane of existence in this whatever right. multiverse. You know, he's considered asking somebody to cast uh, uh, what I do banishment Banish- on y'all. Banishment. Like yeah. he, he considered finding somebody to cast banishment on himself and just send him back. But he's been out of where he's from for. How much was the time skip? Like eight years, nine years, something like something that, like give that. or take. So it's almost been ten years since he's been back there. So who knows about like his family and stuff? And so I think he's kind of like decided to leave that life behind anyway. So potentially, he might take. How, it. how did the passing of Duke affect Thok? Oh, like that. In a way. It, he doesn't blame himself for it, but he's not like I think he's starting to learn how to harness his rage and focus it on the right direction mm-hmm. because that I ain't gonna lie as a player like that pissed me off. Like I was like, this is gonna fuck him up, and I'm like, he's gonna blame himself, and I'm like, no. I was like, he knows exactly who did it. So, and if it wasn't for the fire giants and all this situation that we're dealing with right now, Duke would still be alive. So he's going to channel that and try to focus it in the right direction. So it, I think that's where the barbarian side of him is going to take over a little bit more. Um, so. Well, yeah. and then let me, let me pivot to a question to Mike and ask Mike and not Alder. How did that Duke passing affect you as a player. I know that Alder doesn't really have a relationship and he's like, oh no, that old tiny man with a big old beard is a dust person now. But how did it affect you as a player knowing the attachment Justin had and and your own personal attachment? As like outside of Alder, I was fucking heartbroken for Justin. Like, just because I, like, background for you guys that don't know, Duke is, like, the first PC that Justin fell in love with that he ever played. So knowing that he was willing to kill off that character in this campaign, like, it's just one of those things that, for me, it shows how much Justin likes us as a group of players that he was willing to go ahead and kill off his baby, essentially to punish us. Um, Hi, can which, you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you, baby. Okay. I'm, so, I'm talking about I'm how never... much you love us. Yeah, so. I'm sure. He actually, actually was. I actually he am. actually was. Uh, so... Keep going, <laughs> <Yeah>. man. So, <laughs> no, Keep going. Fucking do fact... it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dare you. Um... <clears throat> No, but realistically for me, that's that was kind of the thing for him is I know how much that character meant to Justin and the fact that he was willing to let go of him because he knew how much it was going to advance our story just shows how much he has like faith in us as a group of players to continue to tell a good story. And it was it, it, it was kind of just like a reflection. It was Justin being letting go and moving on from that character. And at the same time, also showing that he has faith in us to have us continue on, you know, in Duke's honor kind of thing. Like, so it, it was just a very, very sweet moment. But as Mike, as a person was incredibly sad because I just know how important Duke was to Justin. So, well, so I want to finish Alder, one. Give two fucks. So. Right. I want to finish with one last question <laughs> to Josh because he didn't get to answer a personal question. When Duke died, did that kind of flip a switch for you to go, "Oh shit, this is for real"? Uh, as a character or as a player? As a as a player. Yeah. Um. Kind. Oh, hold on. Um. Kind of. As as a player, it was like. This is really frustrating. Um. As as a player. Hey Jordan, you're picking up a lot on the on the thing. Thank you. Um, as a as a player, it was a. Um, oh God. I can't focus today. You're Hold good. on, Re- say the question again. Let's pretend like. It so just when yeah, so when Duke 
when Justin eviscerated him and made him a dust person, did that make you as a player go, oh, shit, this is for real? Like, he's playing for keeps now. Yeah, a little bit. Um, more of my thought was I felt bad that we had killed or let one of his characters die, especially one that was so important to him. So it almost melt, felt more like – it felt like Justin had a dog and we accidentally kicked <clears throat> it, you know? So it was more like, oh, shit. So, yeah, I, I guess the answer is yes. Um, it feels like, oh, shit, we really have to pay attention to the decisions we make, the timetables that we're given, etc. Awesome. I have one question real quick. Sorry. Uh, to Pat, actually. Did you think that Duke's death was going to affect Helm as much of it did? No, absolutely not. Uh, going to see Helm or Heimdall as uh, Thor will call him. Uh, I did not envision him being weakened to the state that he is. Uh, that is definitely a very interesting plot point that I am interested and also terrified to follow up on. Um, but I feel like there are more adventures to be had in Asgard, and hopefully we'd be able to replace that piece of him that's missing. I have a question for Mike or for Alder before we close out and start the up. episode um what is your favorite way to season a pine cone knowing that it's your favorite food <laughs> honestly um as older would say um you got to go to trader joe's and get the everything but the bagel seasoning uh it's really the best thing that you could put on it it great for breakfast great for dinner great at supper time um wait are they bagel bites uh are yeah pine cones are just bagel, bagel bites <laughs> yeah what'd you guys think i was talking about <clears throat> we just they call also, them I will say problem. Trader Joe's does also have a um, a vegan like chicken flavored seasoning that that is also very very good. Like if you want to like basically try and make like a vegan like chicken flavored ramen or something like that, you can kind of make it on your own with something like that. It's just something that's very good for like kind of adding into like a broth. So I have a question for Josh. Is this good for the traps for the moment? Is that I stretched out a little bit. Is that is that better? Yeah, if you can hit like further back, the hard part is your shirt's in the way. Um, <clears throat> for context, everyone, I wanted to off. look like yeah. Pat, uh, like a little version of Pat with a giant head is jumping out of his shoulders. Yeah, you'll get there eventually. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, Justin, are you are you ready? Because I'll switch us to uh, stream mode. Uh, yeah. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. We appreciate it. All right, and 28 minutes.